Hello again, it's Vic here from the Armourer's Bench. Right, what do you think I've got here? Well, if you want to guess, there are some very, very obvious hints in the various parts of this machine gun. Do you recognize the carrying handle? Do you recognize the bipod? The uh, flash hider and front sight looks similar to uh, an L4 A1 series. The buttstock's different. The rear sight, I know what you're thinking. He's got some variation of a brain gun there, and you'd be right. This is uh, an experimental belt fed Bren gun derivative. It's not a belt fed Bren gun per se, it's uh, a belt fed machine gun that was designed uh, and developed at Enfield. Its, um, its designation is the SFMG X11E4, and it's serial number 11. It's one of only a, a very small number of, uh, uh, of belt fed type Bren guns that were made. And the information that I can find is that it was really the belt fed mechanism or the belt fed concept um, comes from the development of the Taden gun. The Taden gun was a, 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 a medium machine gun supposed to replace the Vickers machine gun and the Bren gun in service if Britain had adopted the EM-2 rifle in 280 caliber. When the rifle number 9, which the uh, EM-2 would have been, was um, knocked on the head and came to nothing, and Britain then adopted the FAL uh, as the L1A1, the SLR in uh, service parlance, um, a machine gun was still required. The Taden gun was modified to use 7.62, but the Taton gun really was a, a, a medium machine gun, so a, a, a light general purpose machine gun was still required. So the design was tinkered with from what I can gather, and we come up, at least with Enfield, with this uh, X11E4 uh, light machine gun concept. It's belt fed, does, it doesn't feed from a magazine at all. Um, it has a, an unusual feed mechanism that really was a good way of utilizing a lot of the Bren characteristics and uh, keep some familiarity there for, uh, for continuity of use and training in field. Um, <laughs> but it eventually, it com didn't compete, but it, it ran up against BSA's offering. I think that was their uh, Model 16 um, belt-fed uh, machine gun. They both had good points, they both had bad points. The bad points of the Enfield design was that the feed mechanism is powered from a rotating vertical post that is cammed by the bolt's action. But there are so many mechanical uh, changes in direction of the feed from a, a lateral motion to a rotating motion and then back to a lateral motion that the uh, action is too complicated and the drag inherent in the system without adequate uh, lubrication was too much. It made the gun marginal in operation. Um, the, like I said, the, the good thing is there's a lot of familiarity to it uh, as the uh, as the brain gun is, um, it has um, no provision from what I can see for semi-automatic fire. The cocking handle is very brain gun. Um, the trigger is a double trigger, much like an MG34, or looks like it. Now, I thought pulling the top may give semi-automatic fire and the bottom fully automatic. It doesn't appear to do that. When we strip it, if we can, uh, we'll see that. There is a, a, a rotating safety on the side, this side. <clears throat> the receiver is cut for an indirect dial sight, very much like the Vickers machine gun would have been, and the early uh, Mark I Bren guns as well. Barrel removal is uh, a la Bren gun. Uh, the bipod is off a of Bren gun. The gas block 
is a three position type like a brain gun. It looks so brain gun. When we do some up close, you can see it. Um, what I show you is the, uh, the removal of the barrel. I've already cocked the action here because it's quite stiff, so I've had to get behind it. But uh, with the action cocked, we lift the uh, barrel change nut a la Bren, knock the barrel forward, and the barrel comes off. It's a much heavier profile barrel than the uh, um, standard Bren gun, but the change mechanism is exactly the same. Okay, the feed tray cover here, there's a latch at the rear, we'll show that in close up as well. Press it in and the feed cover pops up to place a belt in and there's the loading tray. On this the loading tray falls out which seems to be a bit of a, a design flaw. Uh, it doesn't look as though it's supposed to be secured um, but it just pops out. Um, I don't think it was a very good idea. Put that back in. Okay, both going forward. Safety off, of course. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see how we would strip this. If we come up close, we can see the receiver here, which looks very much like a brain gun. The bolt is quite different though. As you can see from the top here, the track, it locks the same as a brain at the rear through coming up. But on the this side, we have a track which is the area which cams the uh, vertical rod. This cam here rotates with the bolt reciprocating and then it actuates this cam here. So to feed, to move the feed cover, you have to actually have the weapon cocked, otherwise it doesn't engage correctly. There's the feed tray. There's the trigger mechanism, and it doesn't have a provision for semi-automatic fire. You can see the trip here, the sear. It doesn't matter which part I push, it trips down. There's the barrel, quite heavier than a standard Bren. The flash hider, very much like an L4. Can we look at this side of the body, at the markings? As you can see there, SFMG X11E4, serial number 11. Rear sight. There's the dovetail for the indirect fire sight. Okay. Let's put it back together. Okay, first things first, the bolt. With no trigger mechanism on, obviously the bolt moves all the way forward. 
we put the feed tray back in and we'll close the top cover now that's where I went wrong there you can't close the top cover because it's not cocked so we now put the recoil spring and action spring back in this is a little bit of a tricky fiddle let's have a look there we go Okay, now we're reassembling the gun and we're going to put the feed tray back in. Um, first of all, we, what we should have done was cock the gun, but we didn't. So we placed the feed tray in there. And now we're going to try and close the top cover. But we, but I have to cock the gun first so that everything, all the cams align. Then we close the top cover. That shuts quite well now. And now we place the barrel back in. Making sure, go on Vic, lift that barrel nut, that's right, push it back in, and lock it in place. That's everything assembled, and now let's the working parts go forward. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video on this uh, very rare and uh, unknown machine gun from the 1950s. Um, let's just turn it around so you can see the the reverse side of the gun, the left hand side of the gun and the feed controls. As you can see this gun really didn't catch on and it lost out in the trials where it competed against the FN Mag 58 which uh, was adopted in British service as the L7 machine gun. Uh, an interesting anecdote in amongst the uh, the British designs of the 1950s and uh, a rather unusual gun that uh, not many people know about at all. Sorry about the sound, the microphone died on us uh, when we were filming and so I'm doing this voiceover. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video that we made here today and uh, if you'd like to see more please uh, like share and subscribe to the video any comments please put them below in the video and we'll see you later bye